Joseph Browning Corbin Sr. was drafted into the United States Army and was sent to Fort Benning, Georgia, where he became an expert in the use of heavy caliber .30 and .50 machine guns. He was deployed to the Atlantic Theater of Operations and his unit served under General George S. Patton in the famous Battle of the Bulge. At one point during the war, his army unit liberated a group of French citizens and freedom fighters from the Nazis, an act of bravery that earned him the highest honor in France, the Order of the Legion of Honor, bestowed upon him by the government of the Republic of France. After his retirement from the United States Army, Joseph took a job with the Metropolitan Police Department and was assigned to the presidential detail at the White House for five U.S. presidents, Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon. The first president he served under was President Harry S. Truman. Joseph formed a friendship with President Truman, running into him on his daily walks in the garden. Harry Truman, when he would go for his walks, he would frequently stop and chat with me. And it wasn't unusual for him to say, let me see your hands. And I'd put my hands out. And one day I said, Mr. President, can I ask you something? And he said, sure. I said, what are you looking for? Truman replied that he was looking to see if Joseph was a Mason yet and was looking for the fraternity's ring. And he said, you haven't joined the Masons yet. I said, I don't know anything about Masonry. He walked over and put his arm around my shoulder and he said, son, I'm gonna tell you all you need to know about Masonry. Well, when the President of the United States says that, <laughs> you listen? You listen real good. He says, it only takes good men and makes them better men. That's all you need to know. Under President Truman's tutelage, Joseph learned about Freemasonry and ended up knocking on its doors. Joseph Browning Corbin Sr. was initiated on March 4, 1996, into the Society of Free and Accepted Masons in one of Washington, D.C.'s oldest lodges, Columbia Lodge No. 3, chartered in 1802 and co-founded in 1811 the Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia. In 1971, five years after he was raised to the sublime degree of Master Mason, Brother Corbin served as the Worshipful Master of Columbia Lodge No. 3, the same lodge in which President and Brother Gerald Ford received his second and third degrees of Freemasonry as a courtesy to Malta Lodge No. 465 of Grand Rapids, Michigan. At the conclusion of his service at the Metropolitan Police Department, Worshipful Brother Corbin retired to the state of Florida. On June 2, 2019, to mark the 75th anniversary of D-Day, June 6, 1944. The Grand Master of Masons of Washington, D.C., Most Worshipful Brother and Dr. Charbel T. Fahed visited the city of Seminole, Florida to pay homage to Worshipful Brother Corbin for his service during World War II. Present at the ceremony were neighbors and friends of Joseph Corbin and his wife Nancy, including Virginia Berry, who was Miss Florida in 1945. To mark the occasion, United States Senator Marco Rubio for the state of Florida sent an official representative to deliver on his behalf a message of thanks and gratitude to Worshipful Brother Corbin. Today, 75 years later, in the town of Beirut, 10 miles from that Normandy coast, there is a sign painted on the window of a local restaurant reading, Welcome to our Liberators. It is worth remembering that Mr. Corbin and the men who came ashore in the Higgins boats that day and who parachuted into France in the dark of night were not there to conquer foreign lands. They were there to liberate the people of France and Europe and to preserve freedom and self-government. We stand here today because of those brave men such as Mr. Corbin who stormed those beaches and fought their way through the hedgerows of northern France succeeded. 
we, today's free men and women of the world, owe them a gratitude we can never fully repay. We thank Mr. Corbin for his service, commemorate his bravery, and remember the sacrifice of those who did not return home. Theirs is a victory that truly changed the fate of this world. Sincerely, Marco Rubio, United States Senator. Thank you, Mr. Corbin. Also present to honor Worshipful Brother Corbin was the mayor of the city of Seminole, the Honorable Leslie Waters, who had this to say. So we all on council uh, want to uh, congratulate uh, Mr. Corbin uh, for the recognition today. On behalf of the other two from the council, we're very happy that you're here. We're glad you're um, our groupie, but more importantly, we're your fan club, the Joe Corbin fan club. The ceremony concluded with remarks given by Most Worshipful Brother Fahed. His army unit took part in liberating French citizens and freedom fighters from the Nazis for which he received the order of the Legion of Honor from the government of the Republic of France. Most Worshipful Brother Fahed invited the Grand Master of Florida, Most Worshipful Brother John Westerman III, to join him in awarding Worshipful Brother Corbin Freemasonry's Medal of Honor for his service to our country, Freemasonry, and the cause of freedom. have the honor and privilege to present on behalf of the all Freemasons of our jurisdiction this medal of honor and for the great service that you have done the uh, service of freedom. <laughs> Coincidentally, Justice Colonel Lodge, number three in the District of Columbia, is also my mother lodge. The lodge to which belonged American giants such as President and Brother Gerald Ford and FBI Director and Brother J. Edgar Hoover. They exemplified the principles of Freemasonry and applied them for the welfare of our nation in particular and Freemasonry in general. Long live the United States of America, and may our flag always proudly wave over this blessed land. Worshipful Brother Corbin, in his own words, addressing his brothers in Washington, D.C. Good evening to my brothers from Washington, D.C. My name is Joe Corbin. I'm a past master, Columbia Lodge number no. three in 1971, which I, I will very shortly come up on 50 years as a past master. We've had some wonderful masters of our lodge over the years, and the age and has taken its toll on them, so I guess I'm the oldest one now, but that doesn't mean that Columbia Lodge number three is not with some very wonderful past masters. I haven't attended the lodge in quite a while, been living down here in Florida since 79, but uh, I, I read everything in the bulletin and try to keep up with what's going on. And I want to ask my brothers to always be proud of Columbia Lodge number three and for the past masters and the masters who conduct funeral services, this is one time that masonry is on display to the public, it, it would behoove any of you to 
memorized the uh, ritual that goes with the uh, funeral service. It, you can emphasize it much better if you memorize it. And I think that the public would be appreciated much better if, if you did. I want to say to all of my brothers, God bless you. And always remember that our great architect of the universe looks after us and protects us as he has done with me for many, many years. To all my brothers, God bless you and amen.